Hello, and welcome to another episode of Making Sense of Social Media. My name is Lori Clausen, and today's episode has such a firecracker of a guest. Her name is Abby Wood. I'm going to let her introduce herself, but we cover topics about content marketing that can help you really ignite your brand and get that brand awareness out there. Abby, why don't you introduce yourself to those watching and listening today? Thanks so much, Laurie, uh, for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Uh, my name is Abby Wood, and I am uh, owner and, and founder of The Content Lab. We are a, a small but mighty content agency based in Waterford in Ireland. Um, I have a team of eight writers now, um, and uh, kind of we, we serve clients uh, across Europe, the UK, US, uh, Australia, and Canada. So a, a nice range of people that we help. <laughs> Wow, that is exciting. How long have you been doing this? Uh, uh, well, uh, the Content Lab uh, was born five years ago. Um, mm -hmm. I've been a, a content strategist and copywriter for 13 years now at this point. Um, so yeah, been, been around a while. <laughs> yeah. Why don't we just dive right into it and um, so we can help the listeners. So what are the main goals in your opinion and ex expertise of creating and distributing content on your social media platforms? Mm -hmm. So for me, social is all about just building that brand awareness. Um, so kind of if, if you go to to our socials, um, my lovely project manager keeps them updated every every day, every couple of days. Uh, when it, it's 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 about staying front and center in front of your your target audience and kind of your clients, everything else. And um, so although for, for us, I know we do get some leads through social media and um, most of the time I'll find that people will um kind of check in to see kind of our vibe on social media as well so it, it's kind of um it's making sure that one we're still an active company because uh we've all seen those dead profiles where it's you know kind of last right. updated seven years ago and it's like oh yeah. wow i think they're gone <laughs> <laughs> um and also just to share share expertise and you know engage and and, and kind of uh, build a community around exactly what you do and who you do it for what is your opinion on which platform people should choose like how how does that evolve effectively I think it really depends on who you're targeting so mm -hmm. different types of people hang out in different places online and um, so I do not have a Twitter slash x account and um, just because I tend to find that my target audience don't hang around on that platform I cancelled my x too yeah no <laughs> <laughs> no I, I don't be having time for that <laughs> <laughs> exactly um, I think most of the time we're, we're very active on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So um, I tend to find, because we, we do, you know, kind of offer the social media packages and this kind of thing. And depending on where our clients' audiences are hanging out online is where we'll really focus. Um, and it depends on the type of content you want to produce as well. So obviously, you kind of we, we all know LinkedIn is, is a little bit more formal, a little bit more professional, uh, mainly business owners, whereas Instagram is very um, video and imagery heavy. And then Facebook is is kind of a certain age range, myself included there. Um, so, and, you know, kind of, yep. <laughs> Um, and TikTok is known as it's still known, I think, of being kind of for for the younger generations. Um, I I'm not on TikTok, unfortunately. You will not find videos of me dancing online. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say the same, but I do have a few. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. See, this is it, and I'm sure that your target audience know exactly, you know, kind of where to find you because you know, kind of, I I think it's important, you know, um. I think it's important to figure out exactly what they're looking for as well. So, yeah. you know, kind of, um, I, I don't think that most of the people that we work with would be hanging out on, you know, kind of TikTok or X or anything like that. Um, and that comes down to a lot of kind of background research as well. So before we start, um, you know, just posting up on social media kind of willy nilly and, you know, just be like, oh, I need an active presence across these 10 different platforms. You know, we, we've only got so many hours in the day, um, especially kind of, you know, if you're just starting up or, you know, kind of it's a side hustle that you're trying to get off the ground. We need to prioritize where we're going to have the best impact. And um, so, yeah, have have a look at kind of where your competitors are posting. Have a look at where your audience is hanging out. Um, and then 
try and create a, a plan of action that'll get you kind of the most bang for your buck so you're not spending hours and hours every single week posting on social yeah I that's such great advice I I feel I feel for the small business owner who doesn't really know where to start with content marketing because likely they're so super passionate about what they're doing and they know they need to use social media to get their brand awareness out but they're just feeling so conflicted with like how to do this effectively so knowing really like you said researching and doing that kind of um, back-end research into their target audience is so important like I would say like, just take the time you need before starting, like you said, before starting anything, do that research. It's so important. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, kind of, we, we don't want to spend hours, hours of our uh, limited time, um, you know, kind of posting up on a platform and getting no engagement, getting no follows, getting, you know, kind of absolutely no traction on there. Um, mm -hmm. just because we, we skipped a little bit of research in the beginning. Um, yeah. I think, I think it's important. And, and just going back to your point about content marketing, you know, kind of, there are so many different facets of content marketing and, you know, kind of one Google search of, you know, how to do content marketing or, you know, kind of the most important parts will give you a list like a week long of just, yeah, no, you must do this. You must do that. You must do this. And it's, you know, kind of in an ideal world, we could all do blogging and email marketing and, you know, kind of social media updates 10 times a day and all this kind of stuff. But when you're either doing it all yourself or, you know, kind of you, you have kind of like a VA or something like that that's helping you, we really need to focus on on what's what's going to be most effective for us. And um, so I, I, I'm a big fan of content repurposing. So yeah. say if you, you know, kind of if you're passionate about a particular subject and, you know, you've written a beautifully long blog post about it and you have it up on your website, just take little snippets out of that and post it up on your social media account and link back to your blog. Um, you know, kind of it, it's it's halving the amount of work that you have to do. Like, you, you know, kind of it doesn't have to be 100 percent, you know, kind of brand new content for your social. You can use little bits and pieces out of your website as well. So yeah. make it easier on yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love that. All right. I want to get your expertise and opinion on um, how do you measure the effectiveness and impact of social media content? And do you have some key metrics that you use to determine that effectiveness or maybe some tools, that kind of thing? I think if you're just getting started with social media, um, you can literally see how many views you have, how many interactions you have um, in the back end. So the, the, the business management area of uh, kind of your Facebook or your, um, I don't know, does X have that? I highly doubt it does, knowing X as it is. <laughs> uh, LinkedIn has it as well. And um, so, you know, kind of you can get metrics that are automatically um, just tracked by the different platforms. And mm -hmm. um, so you can do that. And um, you can always um, include, you know, kind of on your contact forms and that kind of thing. Like, where did you hear from us? So include social media as an option. And, um, you know, if, if it's a little drop down kind of thing, you know, kind of add, add that in. And yeah, just kind of you could ask for feedback from clients as well. So um, I, we've we've always had uh, good feedback on our social media stuff, um, which I'm very grateful to my uh, wonderful team for creating stuff. But um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much it. Um, so I mean, you know, you can measure the amount of messages that you get as a result. And um, you can me um, measure, you know, kind of the amount of views that you get, and um, you know, kind of your your reach, depending on the platform as well. So different platforms measure different um key performance indicators so uh yeah there's there's a there's a variety of things to take a look at and um i guess kind of bring it back to what's most important for you as well um so you know kind of if if you are you know trying to raise brand awareness obviously kind of the amount of views and the reach that you have is super important and um, if you're more concerned about um quality of the traffic rather than the quantity so how many people are messaging you um or you know kind of liking your posts or commenting on your posts would be more important than the amount of people that are actually viewing it the quantity versus quality debate just in terms of the number of followers has shifted so dramatically over the years. When I started in this game back in 2011, I mean, people were buying followers just. Yep. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Oh, I remember those days well. Yep. It's like, oh, right? look, I just want 500 followers. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> 
nobody's impressed by that <laughs> oh no, and it just ruined things for you know the, those clients that I had way back then they were just like why why didn't this work and you know well let me explain it to you <laughs> so this is it you know kind of you'd, you'd rather have one real person that's eventually going to buy from you or hire you than you know kind of 40 40 people that occasionally like or you know or bots, whatever it is, you know, that that one person is more important than, you know, kind of having a thousand likes. Yeah. So Abby, what are some best practice tips for creating engaging and relevant content for your target audience? I know engagement is such a huge topic. And so yeah, what are some of your best practices tips? So for me, kind of, it's it's often overlooked when people are doing it themselves, um, but a good call to action or a CTA. So a lot of people will post up on social media um, and not really have an instruction of what to do with that post. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, kind of, oh, I'd love to hear your feedback on this. Or, you know, if you're given an opinion about something in the industry, make sure that you're asking the reader what their opinion is as well to try and get them to comment. Because obviously the more comments, the more likes you get, the more uh, your post is seen across different networks. And um, so a CTA call to action is, is super important for me. Um, and, you know, kind of even, even if say you are promoting a blog, make sure you have a link to the blog, make sure or, you know kind of you're saying oh you know if you're interested in this check out our blog on this kind of thing um and for a lot of people that are just getting started they often forget about that so that's that would be a really important one um i i like the um the five to one rule uh which is uh kind of you have um five expertise sharing knowledge sharing posts um to one sales post so oh, if you are trying to okay. get a uh, yeah, yeah. So if, if you're trying to get a, a, you know, kind of a new service off the ground and you're actively promoting it, you don't want to be just promoting that. You want to be sharing some insights, some expertise at least four to five times. I always say five times um, because it's just easier to remember. Um, and then you could do a sales post. So we don't want to be too salesy. We want to be, you know, kind of nobody likes logging onto their Facebook and just like, you know, product, 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 service, service, service. You, you want to have whether you know kind of your your brand voice is kind of humorous and you like sharing funny pictures you know kind of around what you're doing day in day out or you know kind of your your sharing you know kind of really insightful um takes on industry events or something like that we we want to be splitting up the, the sales with the actual um sharing as well yeah i couldn't agree more when i do um some of my coaching and teaching it's it's and i'm like looking at their content on their different platforms, it's overwhelming to me how little of those calls to action that are actually there. I'm like, people, we need to be told what to do, <laughs> you know, like, you know yeah, we, we just, if, if we don't tell them to click here or buy this or, you know, download that or listen to this podcast, <laughs> they're not going to go because it doesn't, you know, we live in such a world where that just doesn't happen. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think kind of, you know, when when we are on social, there's a lot of noise in the background and there's a lot going on. So you in order to stand out, you need to give them a direction of what to do. So whether yeah. that's, you know, call now or click here or whatever it is, you know, kind of to get them to stop scrolling is the idea. And um, so, yeah, definitely call to action essential. All right. This is a big one. How do you balance the quality versus quantity debate that surrounds social media marketing content? And I'm going to mm -hmm. preface this by saying, I, I'm not everybody will know who Gary Vaynerchuk is, but um, a lot of people do. And he's the type of person that he, he just talks about, you know, you should be putting out 50 pieces of content a day across all the social channels to, to get awareness. Everybody can do that. What's wrong with you? You should be doing this. And, you know, the little guys like us are sitting back going 50 pieces of content a day. Like I barely do that a year. So what is your take on the quantity versus quality debate? Quality over quantity, a hundred percent. So I would much rather have um, one social media update a day, one social media update a week, then have 20 rubbish ones 
every Mm. single hour it's all about intention as well you know kind of what is your intention by updating your social is it just to create background noise or is it to actually connect with your ideal customer i'm a big fan of it's there is a movement um kind of with with slow marketing at the moment and the slow web which is actually creating more insightful engaging useful content than just spam and just you know, kind of putting out thousands and thousands of blog posts every single year that don't mean anything. Same with social media posts, you know, kind of just updating for the sake of updating. And because if if your heart isn't in it and you're not sharing stuff that you would like to read, then the person reading it isn't going to care either. So I, yeah, I would 100% argue that it's better to, you know, kind of foster those important relationships and increase your trustworthiness with useful updates rather than just saying oh I updated 10 times today I can get that off my to-do list you know would you say that intentional content can be video as well as like something image-based or text-based or like what would you say would perform better would would it be video and what do we then say to the person who's totally nervous about getting on video like how do we Mm -hmm. get them over that hump Yeah, so video is incredibly, incredibly popular. Uh, It usually performs better. Uh, Kind of, I'm I'm, I'm not going to quote any stats here. It's been a while since I looked them up, but the last time I did check in, video does perform better. I think that if you're shy about getting in front of the camera, that's fair. If you're uncertain about it, maybe think about doing a few trial runs before putting it up. Uh, Look up, you know, kind of a few guides or, you know, kind of, get some help with with kind of self-confidence or something like that and you know kind of like a coach like yourself Laurie um, or or something like that and you know kind of just give it a go just give it a go and if you're a hundred percent like no no way am I getting from the camera I don't want to speak you know kind of I you know stutter and you know all this kind of thing and I just feel so self-conscious you could always do a voiceover you could do a voiceover so you can get you know kind of like graphic designer to create a little video whether it's an explainer video or you know kind of just imagery or whatever it is and you can do a voiceover as well so you you're not on camera um and you can have as many goes as you like at uh creating the the audio for over the top um so there are options there are always options out there have you seen the latest trend of these faceless video accounts like i i came across an Instagram account just yesterday. Mm. It, it's a really overwhelming. Like it's literally just a woman, you know, she shows her hands and there's no voiceover. It's just music. Ooh. And then it's text on screen. She has unbelievable amounts of followers. She showed the back end of her e-commerce store, which I mean, whether it's factual or not is up for debate, but I mean, she's earning good money and I am, I have been seeing this across some of the different platforms as well. And Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just, I have a problem with this faceless personally. I have a problem with Mm -hmm. the faceless, you know, you can have the prettiest manicured nails out there and you're, that's not going to build relationship and, you know, get someone to, to trust you. Mm. I haven't seen that it I'm not gonna lie kind of creeps me out a little bit um I you know I would feel I always feel comfortable buying from other people and you know kind of there is that old saying people buy from people they like you know uh, I'm sure lovely hands aside you know kind of you, you need to be able to actually see who you're who you're investing your time and your money with I just thought of of another kind of option that some people do and um, a little uh, not like a caricature, but like um like a comic book version of themselves. So some people, especially with AI as well, you know, you can create a little fake version of yourself. If you're 100 percent, you know, don't want to be on camera and um, you can do that. But for me, I prefer seeing a human face and, you know, kind of I'd, I'd much rather invest in in that than, you know, kind of not knowing who I'm dealing with. Exactly. I'm glad you brought up AI. What is your take on spe- specifically for content marketing? Like it can be so easy to produce content now with like chat GPT or all the other ones. What is your opinion on, on what that looks like moving forward? I don't find it because obviously I'm a copywriter. 
um, and I write for a living. Um, and and for me, I, I know a lot of copywriters, you know, kind of feel under threat from it because, you know, you can create words using it. Um, but for me, I don't think it's at the place right now where it can replace a human. Yeah. So it it doesn't understand kind of nuance. It doesn't understand um, tone very well. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of people do fantastic work with it. And it's like any other tool. It's as good as the person using it. So if you are absolutely amazing at, you know, kind of prompts and know exactly how to, you know, kind of get what you need out of it, then then grant that's all good i would say the stuff that i've seen created using ai um just in terms of 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 copy and content and that kind of thing it always needs human editing always needs human editing um, and it always needs fact checking as well um so i mean if if you're looking to cut down on um the amount of work that that goes into you know like a blog post it's good for ideation. It's good for coming up with ideas. Um, it is good for giving you a general introduction to a new topic. Um, so you always have to fact check everything. But um, And it's good for kind of summarizing stuff as well. So there's a lot of uses for ChatGPT and, and other AI models and stuff. But if, if you're... For me, I'm a big fan of creating content that means something. And, you know, kind of you're always adding your own input into stuff. You're always giving your own insight, your own experience, um, because that's really kind of building the relationship between you and the reader. And AI just can't do that. So I, I do know some agency owners, um, some digital agency owners, sorry, um, and some small business owners and stuff um, that use AI to create like a first draft. So, you know, kind of they'll, they'll ask AI to... Um, create you know like 12 social media updates um, and it'll give you the bare bones of it and then you can go in and just edit it it's it's I think if you're very time strapped um, and you're you're happy editing then um, it's it's definitely got some uses for sure one last question for you today Abby and that is how do you leverage the power of storytelling and emotion in your social media content We've already talked about you know building relationship and you buy mm -hmm. from somebody you trust so, how do you get to that point, right? Absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, storytelling is everything, you know, kind of humans live by storytelling, you know, kind of that's been passed down through millennia. Um, and it kind of to, to go pure, you know, kind of commercialism and stuff, you know, people buy good stories. Um, so, you know, kind of whether it is literally a blog post on, you know, kind of how to fit, how to fix a HVAC system or whether it is, you know, kind of promoting, um, you know, like a, a new uh, a new course on your social media profiles. You know, you always want to add in a little bit of storytelling. It, it brings in the human factor. And we we do that a lot on our social stuff. And, um, you know, so we, we really kind of get to the heart of kind of the emotional drivers. So although, you know, kind of it, it'd be easy to, to turn around and say oh you know kind of content writing what's what's emotional about that we're, we're diving deeper into what's behind the content writing what's behind the website work what's behind this what are the motivations so a lot of our clients you know kind of they 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 suffer from imposter syndrome by creating their own content and um, a lot of them can't write and can't, uh, you know, kind of they feel like they can't and um, they can. Um, but they're just, you know, kind of they're stuck staring at a, a blinking cursor and they, you know, can't get started. Um, and a lot of people really just struggle to get content done full stop. So for us, it's all about figuring out, you know, kind of the story behind that and, you know, kind of the, the individuals behind that as well. And what it looks like once all their problems are solved. So how we can get them from uh, my, my business mentor, he calls it uh, the island of sad and the island of happy. So how you get from the island of sad, which is from before you to the island of happy, which is where their problems are overcome and you're the boat going in between basically. Um, and that's it, that. which, which is in itself a little story. And by using that, yeah. I've highlighted exactly how storytelling works. So there you go. <laughs> I would like a motorboat between those two islands as opposed to a sailboat. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so story storytelling is critical and everybody has stories to tell and um, even if you think that you don't so you know kind of if you're a small business owner you set up your business for a reason so whether it is you know kind of you want to be your own boss or whether you have a, a burning passion to help you know kind of um mums regain their freedom after you know kind of having kids so you set up a nursery or whatever it is 
you have a you have a reason that you set up your business you have a reason that you help the people that you help and there are stories in integrated into all of that um exactly the same you know by telling client stories as well so you know kind of you might have a few funny stories about customers you've helped um that are not not uh laughing at the customers but laughing with them don't get me wrong um you know and we're not using real names here but yeah. that that yeah. kind of stuff so you know there's there's a lot and i think it it brings a human side to to a company which is essential for for small business owners i think we we, we operate on a different level than than you know kind of the massive international corporations um, and right. that's part of our charm Abby, thank you so much. This has been so in insightful and so fun. Tell those watching and listening today where they can find you and how they can get a hold of you. Absolutely. Uh, well, thank you for having me, first of all. I've really enjoyed this. You can get me uh, over at thecontentlab.ie. That is our website. It is .ie because we're based in Ireland. Um, and you can get me on email, uh, abby at thecontentlab.ie. Um, yeah fantastic thank you so much abby what a great episode i had so much fun with you today if you're looking for a marketing coach for yourself and your small business i do offer one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions as well as i have a waiting list for my next group coaching session which doesn't happen until may but you can get on the waiting list now check out your marketing mentor dot online for all the offerings i have there Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.